I'd like to give a small talk about CalDAV, which is a calendaring protocol, actually about CalDAV, CardDAV, and uh, WebDAV. And it's mostly intended for open source developers because I want to motivate them to implement those protocols. So actually, I will give a short overview of the protocol itself. Uh, I'm talking about a bit about the implementation which exists today. Um, I want to say a bit uh, about how to write a CalDAV connector. So if you're a developer and want, uh, want to provide a CalDAV client, I give some hints on how to work on that. And well, related to that, uh, how I think you can help with um, getting better CalDAV support in uh, open source clients. So as I said, CalDAV is a simple HTTP P-based calendaring protocol. It's a standard since uh, last year. Uh, it basically describes how an open uh, or any groupware client, like for example Thunderbird or uh, Evolution, can talk to a server system, like for example eGroupware or OpenGroupware or Serafa, of course. And uh, what's the important thing to keep in mind is that CalDAV is just a transport protocol, so it doesn't des uh, describe how the actual data is formatted. For the actual data, the iCalendar and vCard formats, uh, formats are used, which are in a standard since, I think, more than 10 years. Um, and the important thing is that all the open source clients which exist today, like Evolution, Mozilla, Sunbird, and Contact are all internally based on iCalendar and vCard. So it's a very natural fit, and this is why I don't like articles like that. Um, you can read that for contact or for evolution. So there are uh, announcements like uh, contact or evolution support uh, Microsoft Exchange. And well, it's very annoying because they don't, do not yet support open standards, but they put work into supporting Exchange. I can't understand that, especially because uh, the clients itself are based on uh, the data formats also used by CalDAV, so it would be very easy. Um, a bit about the protocol. Actually, the whole stack is pretty complex, but you usually don't need that because uh, CalDAV also targets web interfaces, so it has a lot of operations uh, so that web interfaces can directly talk to a CalDAV client. That's not something I'm talking about today, um, I'm mostly interested on what needs to be implemented in a native client, like a KDE client or a uh, genome client. Uh, they need mu uh, much less operations. In fact, um, we have a small subset of that defined in the so-called uh, group dev standard. It's not really a standard, it's more like a document uh, which um, contains the interoperability uh, issues. i show that later. Uh, well, to the parts, iCalendar is very common. Most developers probably know how uh, that works because, as I said, it's uh, used in the open source clients anyways. It's very simple text-based format um, which contains the necessary information. Nothing particularly impressive. The same goes for vCard, which is almost the same format except for contact data like telephone numbers and email addresses and stuff like that. You can uh, store birthdays in uh, vCard. Well, and the most important uh, protocol for CalDAV is HTTP because almost everything needed to write an HTT uh, a client server system which does cal calendaring uh, is already contained in HTTP. It provides operations to retrieve items, to store items, to delete items. Well, and it's actually, uh, there's a new buzzword for that, which is REST, which just means that uh, HTTP is applied at, uh, as it was uh, originally intended, which is using those operations instead of using just POST and some uh, CGI scripts, uh, which do other stuff. So, this is how the HTTP looks like. This is for retrieving an item. You just uh, use a get method 
to retrieve a URL which uh, contains an uh, event in this case. Uh, the if no, mat, uh, if no match is actually an optimization. Uh, the, uh, the number behind that, it can be anything. It's just a marker which uh, says whether the item changed on the server. So if the client retrieves such a calendar event from the server and stores that in, in, to its own cache, it can uh, put that uh, version into the request and the server will only return the content uh, if it actually changed. So it's much faster. In this case, it changed and it actually embed, uh, embeds, well, actually, it's a bad example, it didn't change, but it actually embeds a, an iCalendar file and uh, gives a new e tag. In this case, it's the same. Um, changing an item um, is becoming uh, realized more on the if match uh, header uh, because the put operation is used for both, uh, for changing an item and for creating an item. And in addition, a, a put operation, a write operation, must detect changes by other users. For example, if uh, another user moved an appointment in his client, uh, another user must be able to de detect that so that he doesn't overwrite the changes of that other user. And this is what the e tag is uh, used for again. So this basically means only writes this content if it didn't change. So if it changed in the meantime, the server will issue a special HTTP status, uh, status code, which is 419 conflict, and the user can then decide whether the uh, client should reissue the same request without the if match, or whether it somehow retrieves the uh, updated information and merges them, or, well, whatever, the, uh, whatever choices the client uh, gives the user. Um, as I said, creating the item is basically the same thing, uh, but to ensure that the event does not yet exist at that URL, you put that if non, -met, uh, if non match star into the header. This means that this request will fail if the meeting ICS file already exists. In this case, the, clients, uh, the client needs to issue a new well, file name for that uh, event and retry the request. So most clients actually use uh, uh, unique IDs for that, so it's very rare error. Well, and final delete, uh, it's also very simple. If you want, you can also add an uh, e-tag condition so that uh, the delete only succeeds if no other user modified the event in the meantime. Yeah, you can also remove that and the delete will always uh, succeed. Well, what we have seen uh, before is just regular HTTP. It's in the standard HTTP specification and available for a long, long time. And the same is true for web dev. It's quite uh, available for a long time now. And the most important thing uh, web dev adds to uh, HTTP is um, hierarchies. So HTTP itself, uh, a URL, a uniform resource locator in the HTTP request, is already kind of hierarchy, well, forms kind of a hierarchy. Um, well, the components in the, in the URL uh, can be split by slashes, and, uh, but the important thing is that there is no HTTP operation to uh, discover which uh, children such a collection has. For example, if I want to know that uh, the developer's uh, folder contains a calendar and tasks, sub-items, there is no HTTP operation to find that out. And this is what the prop find is for. Uh, it's the addition by WebDev. Uh, another addition is that uh, WebDev has a concept of uh, metadata. Uh, they are called properties in WebDev. So by using the prop find, you can also discover stuff like when got the file modified, what is the e tag, and other stuff. It's also uh, the basis for uh, web dev extensions. It has a few other things like, for example, lock, which allows you to lock a collection for modification. But uh, that's not really necessary because, as we've seen before, uh, HTTP already supports optimistic locking. So you can just attempt to write and it will only fail uh, if it actually changed. So it's usually much better for the user instead of uh, locking the whole collection. 
So that's how it, uh, what it looks like. It's a prop find operation which goes uh, to a calendar in this case. And the prop find uh, instructions are contained in the body. As a get etag, this says that uh, we want to retrieve the etag of all items contained in that calendar. And it always returns such a multi-status response, which is basically an XML representation of multiple HTTP responses. So in this case, uh, the etag is returned and it always embeds uh, the thing in such a response element, which contains a URL to the item, which is below that collection. In this case, calendar and some item, it's just a unique ID. The user usually doesn't see that. What else? Uh, for CalDAV, um, just below CalDAV, there's also another extension to uh, WebDAV, which is WebDAV ACL. It's uh, access control. So um, most important for, for CalDAV are pr so-called principles resources. Principal resources are just a standard for representing an account in a calendaring system. So, uh, so you actually get an URL, for example, principals, users, Helga, which represents that account. And this URL can be used to retrieve some information about that user. Um, usually those uh, principal resources are not stored in some file or something like that, so, uh, but uh, they are usually backed by some direct directory service, for example, LDAP. So, for example, the Apple implementation uses open directory to store the actual principal information. Um, but it's not just individual users, it's also groups and uh, resources like rooms, uh, which can be represented by principal resources. The most common use in CalDAV is that uh, the so-called calendar home set property. There's the same thing for address books, which is called address book home set. And uh, the way it works is that you uh, do a prop, fi a prop find on the principal URL, and you get back those two properties, and they contain the URL, which uh, points to the server, which provides the calendaring and address book services. This is pretty nice because it uh, allows you to scale uh, very well. So you can distribute users to different servers, you can use different servers for address books and uh, calendars and stuff like that. Um, well, that's about ACL. It also does a lot of permission thing, but it's, uh, that's not really relevant in uh, calendaring that much. It's an extension. I really want to have the open source developers uh, to implement the basics first. So CalDAV, as I said, requires uh, most of those protocols. If you want to do a full CalDAV implementation, you would actually have to implement all those protocols or all those uh, standards. In practice, uh, almost no server does that. The most servers just implement uh, the subset which is actually required to uh, drive the Apple iCal client because this is the most uh, known uh, CalDAV client and more or less a standard to test the color features. Um, but I come to clients uh, later as well. Uh, CalDAV, the most or it's just one additional HTTP method, which is introduced in ACL actually, but it's also used in CalDAV, which is called Report. It's pretty similar to, uh, to the prop find, but uh, it's a way to extend the protocol. So Report request is in the body and well, because uh, native clients which run on the desktop computer usually keep a cache for offline information and stuff like that, um, so, uh, we do not really need the report because all the queries like give me a week of appointments or find a contact with name hello world uh, are done on the client, not on the server. This is uh, something which is important for uh, web clients. For example, a web client could ask the server to return just a week of events. But for native clients, it's usually a useless feature because they have their own cache and do the queries uh, in the cache. There's one report which is very useful, and that's a, a so-called multi-get report. When you synchronize a server the first time, and for example, it contains uh, a thousand events, 
what happens is that uh, the, uh, the client issues a prop find, it discovers uh, the thousand event URLs and then goes on to fetch uh, a thousand uh, or does a thousand request, get request to retrieve the item. Actually, that's not that bad as it sounds because HTTP 1.1 1, 1 .1 also supports pipelining and uh, persistent connections. So issuing a thousand requests isn't as slow as one might think, but still, especially in database-based uh, database servers, a multi-get can give performance advantages. It basically says that in the, re the multi-get report, you can uh, specify a set of URLs and you get for example, 50 events in one batch by just issuing one HTTP call. So it can be a, a major performance improvement. But for example, I'm also testing against Apache, which doesn't re, uh, um, implement report. Uh, it's very fast with GET as well, because it just pulls out the files from the file system and puts it on the socket. It's very, very fast. And could we do questions later, please? Or Exactly, and uh, I come back to that later. It's actually um, the, uh, the thing we want to tr uh, document in group dev, because we think that group dev is, is a subset of all those uh, specifications which are needed to implement a client system. Everything else can be done on demand. For example, you can issue a report. If it isn't implemented, you get back uh, an error code. But I show that. Let's wait a minute. Um, that's something I write, actually wrote just below. So while you can use a, a CalDev uh, report to retrieve a, a bulk uh, multiple events in one step, um, if the server says he doesn't support that, you can still fall back to get. It's not a lot of work for the client developer to do that because it's just an optimization. So, and the important thing is that this get is again plain HTTP, so it works with uh, servers which do not implement full CalDAV or that particular report. Um, as I mentioned, there are other, a lot of different reports. You can extract just uh, subsets of the iCalendar file and stuff like that, which are interesting if you want to write a web interface which directly interacts. Uh, using the browser interacts with a web server, but I've never seen that, and I think it's pretty useless, actually. <laughs> Um, CardDAV is basically the same like CalDAV, uh, just that it's for contacts. The contacts are stored in weak cards. There's also such a multi-get report, uh, but in any other way, it's the same thing like uh, CalDAV just for contacts. So uh, it's currently still in development. Um, well, actually, Cyrus Tabu is a guy who has uh, written the draft but I expect that this will be standardized uh, during 2009, probably uh, in July or something like that. Um, so here we are coming to group dev. With uh, group dev, um, we try to formulate the absolute minimum of operations which are necessary to maintain a proper client cache so that a native client can be developed which interacts with uh, such a group dev server. Uh, the reason is that, well, as I said, CalDAV and even WebDAV itself is pretty complex if you want to implement it. Very few people actually implement the full specification. But group dev is super simple. It's not even it requires you to implement all of WebDAV. If you do, it's great uh, because you can use regular WebDAV clients, but a real group dev client can operate with, uh, with, interoperate with much simpler servers. So it's just one prop find query which we uh, specified in part of that group dev document. I'm showing that later on. And uh, you can, yeah, as per a group dev spec uh, specification, you are not allowed to issue different prop finds. This way, it's 100% compatible to web dev and CalDAV. So every group dev client is automatically a full web dev or calendaring web dev client and can talk to any CalDAV server because any CalDAV server by specification implements those things. Uh, otherwise, it's the same thing like get, put, delete, everything plain HTTP. Uh, content types are vCard and iCalendar. Uh, folder discovery is uh, used using the prop find. So in the result set, you get uh, 
responses for the folders. We actually need to tag calendar folders with a special type so that the client knows that this folder is a calendar server. Well, and the cool thing, or in my opinion, the coolest uh, thing is that you can, you do not need a groupware server at all. You can use just Apache, the Apache uh, WebDev support. You just in, need to enable the uh, WebDev module of uh, Apache and you can use to uh, store that uh, in, in groupware environments. And it's not fishy or something, it's uh, properly protected using the e-text, so concurrent edits and all that work. Disadvantage, okay. <laughs> Wait, sorry. Um. Now it works. Okay, great. So, um, the only real disadvantage is that, uh, of course, you do not have a web interface or something like that. So, it actually only works with real clients. Uh, so it isn't too difficult uh, to write a small script or something which watches the Apache directories for changes and just generates uh, appropriate HTML files for that. You can do that using file system callbacks and uh, just generate an, a web interface, a static one, which is very scalable. Yes? So does it mean that if I put all that uh, on my Apache server, I can basically just run No, not, not a CalDAV client, a GroupDAV client. You could use any GroupDAV client. The CalDAV client, or most on the market, like for example iCal, really do use those uh, report operation, for example, and have no callback. A GroupDAV client could also attempt to use a report, but would fall back to prop find and the regular operations. But I show some, I also talk about the implementations. I uh, come back to that later. Maybe check the time as well. <laughs> okay. Um, in my opinion, it's very cool because everyone has an Apache web dev. It's included in the latest releases and it really works great. It's very fast, even for larger collections. Uh, it doesn't scale to uh, 100,000 events in one folder, but for regular use cases, it's pretty nice, actually. Um, so GroupDAV, as I said, is for offline clients only. We do not provide operations which are necessary for web interfaces, like give me just one week of uh, events. So we actually assume that the local client keeps a cache of the item it retrieved before, because otherwise it would always need to retrieve uh, all events. It wasn't, uh, wouldn't work. But uh, GroupDAV clients, uh, or yeah, well, local clients need to keep a cache locally anyway because you want to have offline capabilities. So it's not really an additional requirement. Uh, as I said, it's very simple, especially for the server vendors as well because they only need to implement that single prop find and the get and put operation, so it's really easy. And it also has a few hacks. We had added, uh, we documented a few hacks which can be used to uh, better support database-based uh, servers, like for example eGroupware or OpenGroupware. Uh, tests to do with the URL constructions, but I do not really have the time to go into detail. Um, on top of CalDAV, the committee added another specification, which is uh, CalDAV scheduling. That's basically the same like IMIP, which is used to ex exchange invitations. For example, if I'm I'm your user and I want to invite another user to a meeting. I would, my, my mail client like Evolution and Contact, 
almost anyone supports that, they send an iCalendar message embedded in an, a regular MIME mail uh, to the other user and he can then accept the meeting and all the interaction in that is uh, documented in iTIP and iMIP. Uh, standard protocols which are widely deployed and uh, standardized since a lot of years as well. And CalDev scheduling is almost the same thing uh, just over HTTP. Well, if you are a client developer and you, are, you want to start uh, work adding group dev support or CalDev support to an open source client, uh, please do not look into that. Yeah, it's quite complicated and it doesn't really buy you that much uh, because the IMIP also works perfectly fine with calendars stored in CalDev. So you can just exchange invitations uh, via email, which is completely standard. Even Outlook and uh, Lotus Notes support that quite well. Not perfectly, but quite well. So you can actually interoperate with uh, those people and schedule meetings. So, but we'll see. Mm. Scalability, I talked about that a bit before. Of course, uh, especially a group dev system with a local cache is really scalable because it has that cache, it does, uh, does all the operations in that cache and doesn't need to call the server to perform operations like, well, sorting events or uh, search for, for context. So the actual processing work for searches is put on the client. So it's quite fast. Uh, Due to the architecture, because it's based on HTTP, it's really super scalable. You have all the features of HTTP which are used to uh, make websites scale. And actually the events which are transferred by CalDAV, the files are much smaller than a, in an HTML page. So you can actually use caches like Squid if you have a really large system to reduce the load on the application servers. And use e-tags with that, because if the, tech, uh, if the cache has the e-tag, he knows whether the, user, whether the cache needs to retrieve the file from the backend server. So there are a lot of features which make that very scalable. Um, well, as I said before, HTTP also supports persistent connections, so issuing a lot of requests isn't that bad as it sounds. Um, and, but most importantly, HTTP itself also supports compression. So it's not so important for the uh, events if they are transported because they are quite small, but the XML of the prop find can become quite big. Uh, I put some numbers uh, rough, roughly. Uh, so a thousand items produce an XML which is about 200K, which is quite a lot. But because the XML is so verbose, it also compresses very well. So if you enable gzip compression in uh, the client, it just comes out as 12K, which is quite okay. And well, even for 10,000 events, which is quite a lot for a single folder, it's just, uh, well, it's not just, it's more, it's 130K, which is significant, but acceptable in my opinion. But uh, most extensions which exist to that uh, protocol are uh, trying to improve the situation with the XML overhead. And uh, especially Apple is doing a lot of work on that as the Darwin Epic calendar server, which is completely open source. And it's written in Python and more or less acts as a test bed for, test bed for features. The uh, developer of the Apple server is Cyrus Dabu, which also worked on the CalDev specification and wrote the CardDev specification. And before he puts those into specifications, he usually implements that in the Apple server. And for reducing the prop find overheads, there are actually two things. Uh, the one thing which is already in production use is uh, C tags. C tags are like E tags. An E tag says whether an event has changed by some other users or by some other means. It's, uh, C tag is uh, roughly the same except that it covers a whole collection, a whole folder. So if anything in the folder changes, the C tag changes. So the client can check for the C tag, and if it only if it changed, it does a full prop find. Uh, the nice uh, thing is again, if you write an, uh, a calendaring client, you can check for the C tag, and if it doesn't work, you can still do the uh, regular prop find. So it's very easy to to fall back to basic functionality if that's necessary. And 
very new, it just got into the uh, Apple server trunk uh, a few months ago, is a uh, Java-based PubSub. Uh, that's uh, a, a way to let the server inform you about changes. So it's actually a, a, um, an information triggered, a notification triggered by the server if something changed in the server. So the client only needs to re do the prop find if something actually changed. And uh, that's all. So everything standards based, it's uh, Jabber. And if, if it isn't available, the client can just fall back to CTAX and uh, to regular prop find in the uh, second row. It's really n not bloating the code, actually. Well, and all the extensions, you can actually look at that. It's in, written in Python. It's okay to read and available from Apple. There are a set of known issues, but most issues, if you talk about CalDAV and CARDAV, are not related to the protocols. Uh, it's usually re uh, related to the um, <coughs> data format, which is iCalendar or vCard, because um, especially iCalendar can be quite complex. For example, if you have uh, recurring appointments and stuff like that, you can in iCalendar you can build pretty complex recurrence rules which are not supported by any client. But in the case of open source calendaring clients, it's no issue if you want to add CalDAV support because those clients are based on iCalendar and vCard anyway. So the developers of Mozilla, of Evolution, and of Contact already did all the hard work of doing the iCalendar implementation, for example. The best iCalendar implementation has a contact, I would say. Um, there are a few other issues, but uh, you are not really hurt by that in practice. You can, we can talk about that if you run into that. It shouldn't be a hurdle. Um, okay, I want to tell a bit about the implementations. That's about the situation uh, mid of last year. There were those group death efforts, which I started personally in about end of 2004. There are about uh, a few smaller vendors which support that, like Open Groupware, Citadel, and eGroupware. There was a work on the CalDAV standard, which is mostly done by, or was done by uh, Oracle, by uh, Apple, and also beta work, which is an uh, education, uh, educational calendaring system. It's written by an American university. And, but really, the huge amount of uh, groupware system, open source groupware system, just in, invented an own protocol for their needs. So for example, if you have contact, you have something like, uh, I think, 10 or 15 different plugins which can connect to the uh, groupware servers. And, well, Right now, I think in, in uh, fresh meat there are over 400 different groupware systems listed. So it can't be the solution. <laughs> but surprisingly, in last year, the CalDAV really got, got adopted by a huge amount of vendors. That's mostly because everyone, for some reason, wanted to support the Apple iCal client. And the Apple iCal client only used the CalDAV protocol, uh, which they probably put into an RFC, and so there was a, it's the first time, and as far as I know, that so many ven calendaring server vendors agreed on a single specification. So all of them either uh, support full or partial CalDEV uh, necessary to derive the ICA client or group dev. Um, well, it's really a lot. For example, eGroup, they also implemented uh, group dev. But, but there are really a lot of projects which are doing that, and uh, I expect that this will be the standard, like IMAP, for example, is for email. Even Google and Yahoo support, uh, support CalDAV uh, for calendar access uh, last year. You can access a Google calendar using CalDAV. So, because there are so many implementations, I thought I should suggest some. It's mostly, all of them are pretty good, but it's usually the developers have some affinity with the programming language. There's a dev iCal, which is, good, which is written in PHP. It's a, I think it's actually a standard package in Debian as well. There's a Darwin calendar server, that's an Apple one, uh, which is written in Python. There's scalable Ogo, uh, which is written in Objective-C. Betawork is that educational server, which is written in Java. There are a lot of alternatives to that. You can just browse FreshMet and find 
probably about 10 Java servers which are doing that. Yeah? What about Apache plus uh, web dev? Sorry? Uh, Apache? I misunderstood you. You mentioned Apache plus web dev would be okay. Uh, as a group dev server, uh, a group dev server. For example, the Apple iCar client is not a group dev client uh, because it uses the extended CalDev methods. So for, to, to uh, connect Apple iCal, you actually need a lot of CalDev operations. But, um, well, I come to the client implementations later on, but it's for, for clients which are advertised at, as CalDev clients, you usually can't use Apache web dev. Yeah, but I can come back to that later. And I would like to have that changed. Actually, if there are developers from the client project, that's basically my, uh, well, what I would like to see is that they can properly fall back to group dev so that Apache is supported. Um, well, if someone knows Perl or Ruby wants, tell me, <laughs> write me an email. Well, as I said, I would suggest uh, one of those servers. Um, well, my personal favorite, as I said, is Apache Web Dev, and I've put a log of uh, such a Apache transaction, which shows that uh, how the fallbacks work. Uh, for example, the client in this case first tried to perform a report uh, to uh, fetch multiple events in, in one batch. And it gets a 405 return code, which says that that method is not implemented, and the client falls back to just retrieving the um, individual events. And as you can see on the timestamps, it's pretty fast. Yeah? Even if uh, the next batch uh, attempt starts, it's really fast. It's like, I don't know, two or five milliseconds to retrieve an item from the server. And actually, well, I come back to that later, evolution, and uh, there's an implementation for Outlook, but I would really like to see that in all open source clients. Uh, to the implementation, client implementations. Uh, first, there is contact. We actually implemented a group dev uh, in contact together with uh, some KDE uh, people in uh, end of 2004. We actually also specified that group dev uh, during that session. It took about uh, two days or weekend. Um, well, the problem is that uh, KDE just uh, rewrote all their infrastructure, so they uh, wrote a new client library, which is called Akonadi, and uh, it will be used in some later contact versions. The contact uh, still doesn't use that, um, and it doesn't provide any support for WebDev yet, so it's quite crappy. <laughs> um, but we really hope that uh, we will, will be able to change that. Probably if uh, uh, contact is ported to Akunadi, we will have a development session with uh, the Akunadi developers to add uh, web dev, group dev, and CalDev support to contact. I hope that we be able to do that until end of the year. Um, the second one is uh, evolution, of course. We also provided a group dev backend uh, or group dev plugin for evolution was a Noodle project. It was sponsored by um, Junta de Andalusia in Spain. Unfortunately, it didn't really pick up at this time, so the connector just became unused, unsupported, unmaintained, so it can't be really used today. It's still in the CVS report, uh, repository, but it's not really useful. But Evolution actually has reasonable uh, web dev support. For one, you can uh, configure CalDev uh, calendars, so you can use CalDev and with, together with a real CalDev server, but it doesn't provide group dev fallback, so Apache, for example, doesn't work as a uh, backend for Evolution. But Evolution actually supports plain web dev address books, so you can store a set of contacts in vCard format on an Apache uh, web dev server, and um, Evolution can probably display them, edit them, and it works very, very well. So it's quite good. So I showed a bit collection browsing. Okay. This is a dialogue of Evolution for, for uh, adding a web dev address book. 
the thing which I do not like about that one is that you need to specify uh, the URL to the actual address book collection. What I would like to see is that you just enter some URL and then would be able to browse uh, through the server like in a file browser because that's what WebDAV is all about. It supports hierarchies and you can browse uh, through them using uh, the appropriate app, uh, prop friend requests. So actually, if there's an evolution developer, please add a browsing uh, module which allows you to select the address books on the server you want to uh, subscribe. That would be much nicer. But even this address book is pretty nice. I just discovered that about two months ago and it's really working very, very well. Um, and as I said, it supports CalDAV. Well, it's a panel for adding CalDAV. I basically have the same complaint. You can browse the server for calendars. Um, well, but otherwise it works quite okay. So it's quite usable. But you, as I said, you need a real CalDAV server. And finally, Mozilla, the Mozilla Alliance, which are Sunbird and uh, the Lightning module for Thunderbird. They are actually very good because First, uh, uh, a few of the Mozilla Sunbird developers actually work on CalDAV implementations. So it's unlike an evolution or a contact, the core developers are actually into CalDAV and support that. So there's a lot, a lot of work uh, on getting uh, that working well. And in addition, there's a scalable Ogo project, which is just another groupware server. Um, and the Scalable Ogo project uh, provides plugins for Mozilla, so it's just regular Mozilla extensions. And those extensions are not specific to Scalable Ogo. They are real group dev clients and ex real calendaring service extensions. So it's quite good. And it's also very easy to hack. Uh, in the address book, for example, it also misses the collection browsing again. <laughs> so you can't actually... Uh, browse a server for, for address books or calendars. What other clients are there? First, there is a Funnable group dev plugin. Funnable is a synchronization server which can synchronize uh, web dev servers with, uh, with mobile devices. So it's a Java application server and there is a plugin for that which is a group dev plugin which can basically synchronize a group dev backend with any mobile device supported by uh, uh, Funnable. Personally, I haven't tried it, but I'm told that it works. Um, there are other clients. Mulberry, for example, I don't like the user interface, but it's actually a pretty powerful CalDAV and uh, IMAP client. Uh, there's Chandler, which is uh, by the Open Source Applications Foundation, which also is based on WebDAV. Uh, there's, of course, Apple iCar. There's another one, which is called EM Client and Outlook. Actually, there's even an open source project called Open Connector, which implements a um, Calif protocol, but it's not very far. So if you're a developer which is into Windows development, they need a lot of help, really. So uh, my section about actually writing such a connector. As I said, it's not that or shouldn't be that hard because uh, all the open source clients already implement the hard stuff, which is parsing and processing iCalendar and recurrence. This is all done. All of the clients can do that. Um, so what we need to add is basically a simple cache, which uh, keeps uh, items retrieved by the server together with the e-tag and the URL. So it's pretty easy. And well, as I said, if you want to start such a connector, please just do the group stuff part uh, working first because you, sh you shouldn't really look into CalDAV extensions until the group dev stuff works. It's very simple and if that works you can start adding CalDAV features with ap appropriate fallbacks to improve performance or provide additional features. But even if you just have group dev, it's, it's quite good already. It can be used in a lot of uh, sharing scenarios. Um, there are also quite a few libraries for doing CalDAV. Um, for example, CalDAV for J, for Java, it's a Java library to do CalDAV, CalDAV client library for Python, Open Group has a library for CalDAV stuff, vObject is also a Python library, the Mulberry client also has a lot of CalDAV functionality uh, packaged in various languages as well. So 
But still, I would say you don't need to use that because uh, the XML you need to pass is just a response from the prop find query. It's just one XML format you need to pass and it would be completely overblown to use in a separate client library for that. It doesn't make any sense. So you should just use your favorite uh, HTTP library to retrieve the items from the server, uh, pass, write one XML parser which parses that uh, prop find, and that's it. Debugging tools. Well, if you're developing something, uh, it's nice to have some stuff which you can use to actually try the thing, and I check where I can show you two. One is CURL, probably many people of you uh, know that client. It's just a command line client to retrieve uh, HTTP servers using GET or any other option. Need to check. It's a bit, does it work? Yeah, it's a bit small, the screen, but um, actually I've written myself a small uh, shell script and the essential stuff is basically the, the bottom. The stuff at the top is just for collecting the, the password and stuff like that. And the bottom uh, actually issues a prop find and the uh, properties which are requested are in that prop find XML file. This actually contains the standardized prop find of group dev and it looks like that. So it's just the core set of properties which are necessary to implement the client. It actually contains some CalDAV and CARDAV uh, properties. So if the server actually supports those, okay, uh, supports those uh, CalDAV protocol, the full or more of the CalDAV protocol, and can actually respond with data. A plain group dev server would just not return anything. And for example, we can try that against some server, actually. How did it come up? Anyways. Oh, no, it's just. That's the iPhone. <laughs> um, let me check. Misprinted. <laughs> yeah. So it's very convenient to see what the server actually responds with. So that's a, actually the Google Calendar, which is requested using group dev. As you can see, it probably responds uh, to that with, an, uh, well, with a prop find response. That's the one you need to be able to pass. For example, the root URL, the Google Mail thing, is a root collection and it contains additional stuff below. If there are any features it doesn't know, it uh, puts them in such a 404 section. For example, this collection doesn't have a display name or a specific content type. So it's quite nice. So that's a CURL. It's quite easy to use to check what the server returns and what you need to pass. It's quite convenient. Um, the other tool is uh, Cadaver. Cadaver is a command line um, client for web dev. Let's see what I have. Okay, let's try the better work server, for example. So it's an interactive client. I can log in. And I can just go like through a file system. I can explore the server, and it's basically the functionality I, I would like to have in uh, Goopia clients as well. For example, here's the calendar of the user. And uh, there are the ICS files. I can just select one and make a cat, and you see the icon in there. So you can use any web dev client to browse such a server. That's pretty nice. And I can show you other servers. It's pretty easy. Let me check. For example, Scalable Ogo. I can just log into that. So it actually has address books, for example, you can go to contacts, and those are all my address books. Uh, for example, anyway, that's a f just regular vCard files. Oops, hmm. didn't copy. So it's just a vCard contained inside. 
So it's very useful for debugging. So, well, I'm actually almost done. Um, well, call for help, as I said, um, I would really like to get the open source client developers to support more of that because I find it just ridiculous that they have very good exchange connectors but no connector for, for group dev or CalDev because it's so easy for them. They already have iCalendar and vCard and they just need to implement, they even have the HTTP libraries for doing that. They just need to implement the proper requests. Well, I've printed some features for open connector which is the open source Outlook uh, integration they need a lot of help. It's just one guy which is working on that. Well, and so if you have any questions, you can write me email or the group dev list is a, is a good one to ask questions. Uh, the the Calif and card dev list, and of course you can go to the website. So, questions. <laughs> Well, scheduling isn't part of uh, group dev. That would be a cut of scheduling, but it's usually done using IMAP anyway, so it's scheduling based on email. But um, groups are basically just regular folders. Uh, the, the server can choose anything. He can choose to provide any hierarchy he likes, and most servers I know also represent the groups and the uh, group calendars as subfolders. And collision is perfectly detected. This is what uh, HTTP e-tags are about, uh, which allow optimistic locking. So there's no chance that writes collide. It's impossible. But for example, is the collision handled on the client side? No, the server does that. It's standard HTTP. That's done on the HTTP server. Yeah, but the client has to give you a pop-up to say the collision. Uh, well, yeah. yeah, of course the client needs to handle collisions. That's yeah. true. But, uh, but the server actually checks uh, whether there could be a collision. The, the server should it checks for a file name with the same name, or does it... No, it okay. has something like an e-tech, which I explained before. I mean, uh, <laughs> time is a bit short to, to re-explain that, but it's, it's perfectly working. There are no uh, concurrency issues in that. Uh, there are also test suites for CalDev. I know that. I never use them, but uh, there's a test suite also at the Apple site, I think, which is in Fulton and Python. So there, I don't remember the name, but you can check on the CalDev website. It, uh, uh, it has a lot of implementations and even the test suite uh, a link to that. So, sorry. Um, well, links to implementations. So. Um, sorry, I can't follow you anymore. <laughs> I thought you said at the beginning of the talk, the virtual Linux server implemented it, and I say the top three implementations. Yeah, I thought you were uh, asking for a test suite or something yes. like that. Yeah, and there is a test suite, yeah? But not all, all servers implement everything in a test suite. So most servers just implement what is required for yeah, iCar. So if I want to server to implement it, that's where I go. That's where I can go for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. Or well, any more questions? No? Okay.